allowing people to collaborate no matter where they're located, even bringing in uh, partners that are outside the company. Uh, companies will do far better than they have in the past. And we're already starting to see some wonderful examples of how this is taking place. Uh, and it's really extending itself uh, throughout the organization. I, I decided it'd be fun uh, to take a, a really impressive example that's a little uh, out of the mainstream. And I heard about some work uh, that's going on uh, in the US Marines, uh, and they agreed to come and, and talk about what they're doing. Uh, so I'd like to welcome out onto the stage uh, Major Jim Comiskey, uh, who's doing some great things with new technology. Hi, Jim. Welcome. So what kind of things are you, are you doing with PCs? It was a real pleasure to be here, Bill. Uh, I work for the Marine Corps Tactical System Support Activity. We're located in beautiful downtown Camp Pendleton, California. And we build tactical systems out there to keep Marines alive on the battlefield. Our customer is a pretty important guy. He's a sweaty, filthy Marine with a rifle who's struggling to get on top of a muddy hill somewhere. <laughs> so we're pretty passionate about building that software right. And we recently did a really large amphibious exercise, about 26,000 Marines and sailors in Camp Pendleton. And we developed some off-the-shelf hardware, software solutions. I'd like to show you, if I may. Good. Now, Bill, one of the maxims that Microsoft talks about is this concept of eating your own dog food. <laughs> and uh, we really like that concept in the Marine Corps. I, I think that resonates with us, primarily because of the quality of the food they feed us in the battlefield. <laughs> it certainly looks like dog food, but it's, it's fairly tasty. Uh, all this gear I'm going to be showing you today is my gear, my personal gear. This is my notebook I use routinely in my personal professional life. This is my handheld PC I'll be showing you later. And we call these meals we get on the battlefield MREs, meals ready to eat. So at McTissa, we, we eat our own MREs. This, this particular box, we put out on the battlefield in quantity. We had a wireless modem. We had LAN connectivity, a battalion intranet, if you will. And we did some pretty cool things with it. This is a fairly typical box. It's got a few differences. It's got a waterproof membrane over the keyboard. It's got a big hard disk. It's got a lot of memory. But there's one thing we really like about this that really appeals and offers a lot of value to the US Marines. And, and that's this. Okay. Now you see, Bill, this is a pretty tough box. I, I wouldn't characterize it as marine proof, but it's, it's clearly marine resistant. <laughs> now, this, this box here, if I turn it on here, and one of these days this isn't going to turn on, but as you can see, for those of you in the front, it is running. It's on now. It's on now, <laughs> exactly. So if we come back over here, Bill, I'll show you how this particular box, and this, uh, hopefully you can see this out here. It's just, uh, this is a, what we call an operation order. And what we use this for is to synchronize the battle at any particular time. And this is really important to us. So you'll be seeing this order later on the handheld PC. I'll put that down for a second. The handheld PC offers us an opportunity to push situational awareness information down as far as possible. Marines call situational awareness, basically we define it as where we are, where the bad guys are, and where our buddies are. So we have some sense of what's going on in the battlefield geometry. And by pushing this critical information down, we give that Marine who's struggling to get on top of that hill a fighting chance. So if I Hopefully this will be on your monitors out there in the audience. If we take a look here, again, this is my own personal box. Hopefully I don't have anything too embarrassing on here. And if I click on my, tap on my tap, taskbar down there, you'll see a, this same operation order, which was transmitted wirelessly from the notebook computer to the palm top. And so you're using the browser that we've got in ROM here? That's correct. Just a typical web browser, and it's got HTML, and the user can click on it, so he can click on task organization, jump down there, click on his task, and see what his commander wants him to do. And this is really important, because typically our state-of-the-art tools for 
pushing around these information orders are a pencil and a piece of paper. And stenography is, is not a prized battlefield skill. So this particular box allows us to wirelessly, wirelessly transmit this information. It really adds a lot of value. Even a little cooler app here, if I bring this up, this is a battlefield map, a typical map that we use on this amphibious exercise. And as you can see here, the digital map is rendered on the screen, and I have two units already plotted there, a second platoon and a third platoon. And let's say I just flew in in the helicopter on first platoon, and I land so oh, about a kilometer to the east. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that unit, and I'm a platoon. Click on next. I'm an infantry unit, so I'll go ahead and type my name. There we go. And as you can see here, I now have a representation of where I am. And I can literally move this icon around. We can hook this up to a GPS and get this moving. And if I received an operation order from my commander, basically something simple like go north and you know, try to find someone's butt to kick, we'll, we'll continue to move north. And all of a sudden, let's say all hell breaks loose. And I'm getting machine gun rounds, tracers, mortars falling around me. If I go ahead and then click where I think that enemy unit is, and since this is a Marine infantry platoon, let's make it fair. Let's put them up against a battalion. <laughs> and I'll make it a tank battalion. We'll make it real bad. And I'll call this the bad guys. Click on go. And so now you see I've represented that. And if I had a wireless connectivity solution between this palm top and another, or a higher level box, I could pass that information around. Now I want to take care of that problem, because that guy's causing me a problem. So I want to put some pain on him. I go ahead and click on top of that, and notice I get these conocentric range rings that pop up. And my little indicator, which before was indicating, you can see on the taskbar there, see that? It was indicating where I touch the stylus to the screen pad here. But if I go ahead and click on the unit, it changes into a range and bearing. And if I now drag to that unit, I'm claiming that unit, do this a little more carefully, no, is exactly 1,500 meters away on a bearing of 309 degrees. And that, I claim, adds tremendous value. Knowing where you are, knowing where the enemy is, and being able to call fire upon him to have him stop hurting you is really important to us. And, and that's about it, Bill. Uh, that, this is the uh, application we built, and it really proved valuable to us to help those Marines get on top of those hills. What kind of thing will you do to ruggedize the handheld PC? Well, that was a big concern to us. We had a real problem with water. Of course, Marines typically come ashore from the sea. We were concerned about uh, ruggedization. So we, we went out and we worked with a vendor to develop a case. Pretty cool. It's camouflage. It's got a thermal blanket in there to keep the palm top cold when it's warm and vice versa. It's also waterproof. And more importantly, it comes with this nickel metal hybrid battery. One of the things they don't tell you about the HPC, when you hook up a cell phone with a cellular modem and it's not designed specifically for that box, your battery life goes down to maybe 20, 30 minutes. So this gives you up to three hours, three to actually six hours, depending upon the, the, the brand of modem. So we really like this, uh, this solution, and it, it did a lot of magic for us. And what kind of new features are going to uh, put into the application in the future? This particular machine is based on a 1.0 CE version. We're looking at, we're very excited about the 2.0 version. And again, I would characterize this whole project as more of a prototype. But the CE 2.0 version is going to use the color, of course. It's going to use the Ethernet that's built in there, the Ethernet support, the Endus Ethernet support, the one-to-many infrared. You know, whatever solution we adapt, it has to be mobile, Bill. I mean, you don't go into the attack with coax cable hanging out your rear end. So you have to have a solution which allows you to move these critical packets to get, to get those Marines on top of those hills. Well, it's been great working together on this, and it's fun to see technology making it out to the front lines. Right. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. An important part